Hello, hello, and welcome back to the channel. As most of you know, I'm Topher. And for those of you who don't know and just randomly decided to click on my video, welcome to the channel. I'm Topher. Thank you for stopping by. So we're here to do a reaction. We're diving back into the Untamed. We're diving into episode 28. And at the end of last episode, um, Chang went to go visit Wuxian and basically investigate what's going on because Wuxian caused this whole ruckus for the entire council of people and they're like he is the enemy he's evil you need to get your subordinate in, in order he went to, he freed the wen clan he killed our people this that the other now they're out in the burial mounds this that and the other so he went to investigate and he saw that it th there's no threat it's just wuxian out here saving some old and very young prisoners of war and that's it he, he was just doing what he felt was the right thing he couldn't stand idly by and watch these people get um, mistreated and abused like that. Um, and then we went to visit my sweet cinnamon roll who is currently under the influence of evil, evil, evil spirits right now. And that's kind of where conversation ended. So, or at least where the episode ended. The conversation is still happening. So we're going to dive in and just see where, where this next episode takes us. What an adorable little ending to the episode. Absolutely precious. Um, I was a little worried, but then I'm like, because we have the whole one month time jump. And well, before we get there, let's let's backtrack the beginning because well, let's not start at the end of the damn episode. So I picked up where we left off with um, Chang and Wuxian just having a conversation and Chang basically just doing what he can, trying to convince Wu Xiang to come back with him. Like, hey, come back with me. Forget about these people, this, that, the other. Come back with me. And, you know, he blurted it out there towards the end. Like, if you do this, I can't, I can't stick up for you. I can't protect you. And you could see in his eyes, like, that's what, it was very similar to what Lan Zhan was saying a couple episodes back when he stopped him when they were escaping the prisoner's camp out in the rain, where he's like, hey, if you go down this path, come back to this world with me, because if you go down this, you know, I can't, I can't save you. We can't be together. This uh, different reasonings behind what they're saying, but same sort of um, theme, same sort of idea, where it's like, hey, if you keep going down this path, I know you feel it's right, but if you go down this path, I can't do anything to stop, because this is just the nature of the world we live in right now. It's the nature of the world that we came from, where... And again, he spelt it out very, very clearly, very honestly. Even if you're right, you're wrong in the narrative that's being spun right now. Because this whole, this whole world with all these sects and whatnot that we came, that we come from, that's just the way it is. You grew up here, and you could be like the most talented person, have all this kind of stuff, but as soon as you have an idea that's slightly different from the popular the popular ideology you're out of your mind you are the enemy blah 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 we don't like change we ain't bringing about change you you've got black magic but whatever it is so chang realizes that if he does not get wuxian to come with him and to surrender over this tiger seal and this that the other that he is going to lose his baby brother. And I I genuinely believe he that he does not want that to happen. But at the same time, he is doing what he needs to do because where Wuxian seems to be the only person right now with this uncorrupted sense of morality and will fight for what he feels is right, not everyone in this universe has that mentality. Um, so it's very easy for us as like outsiders watching all of this unfold to be like, oh, well, he should take his brother's side. He should do this. He should stand up for what's right, blah, 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 blah. But like in reality, like if this were happening in the real world right now, if this were us in these situations, I'm sure there were a lot of people who would buckle under the pressure and just go with what the mass is saying rather than trying to st it's so hard to stand against this 
mass army of everyone telling you that you're wrong when you feel in your heart that you are 100% right. It's so hard to go against the grain when it's that big, that powerful. Um, but, you know, that's how that's how things change. That's how we, you know, we ended slavery here in the United States. That's how, you know, we we fought for equal right, rights for women. We're fighting for equal rights for gays and the LGBTQ plus community. And there's so many other things that we have to fight for and worldwide, too, not just here in the States, but worldwide. Um, but that's that's how it goes. Like, it's hard to deviate from what the masses are telling you, especially when the masses are suppressing suppressing a body of people, suppressing your ideas, suppressing this, that, and the other. Um, but it takes those special people who are willing to stand up and fight. It takes those first couple people because like when, when you've got, when you've been accustomed to the, living this way of life, suppress this, that, and the other, anytime someone tries to speak up, they get taken out, they get beaten down, they get killed, they get whatever it may be. Um, it can be hard to be that first person or that first couple of people to really get that movement going. Once that movement go starts going and you start getting that traction, yeah, more and more people want to join the cause and fight, but it, it can be really hard to be that first couple of people trying to bring about that change. So Wu Xian is one of those people who is like, hey, I'm going to bring about this change. I'm going to make this change because it's what's right. It's what's right. And Cheng is one of those people where it's like, he can see what Wu Xian is saying, but he would. Re it's easier for him to go along with the status quo than it is for him to step up and be one of those people to fight against all of these other sects looking at him saying, hey, you're wrong and we have the power to back it up. We will just obliterate your sect. Like, it's very easy for him to just kind of do that. And I get it. Because in that situation, I don't know what I would do. It's very easy for me, not in the situation, to be like, yeah, I would totally just get up there and, you know, lead the march and yeah, woo, woo, woo. But in actual reality, who knows? I don't know. I've never had to be in that, that, that sort of environment. Like, yeah, we're still fighting for gay rights and all kinds of other things here in modern day world. But this is a fight that's been going on for a long time. So it's like, I'm not someone new to this fight. I'm not leading the march for equality. This I'm just joining a fight that's been in existence. So it's very easy for me because there's tons and tons of other people to join this fight. But if it were just, if I were alive back, you know, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, however many decades ago, trying to start up this fight, I don't know if I would be the person to do that. I don't know if I could do that. I don't know that I would have the courage to necessarily fight against that. I don't know. Maybe I would, maybe I wouldn't. But that's what I'm just trying to say about Chang. Like, I understand where he is coming from. Yes, I would love him to take his brother's side. I would love him to fight for what is right. Um, I would love for him and Ching to be able to be together because, like I said, I've been shipping them together since the early parts of this series. I love them together, and it hurts me that the prospect that they cannot be together. Um, so, like, yes, I would love all things these things to happen, but it's just not in Chang's character. It's not written in his character. And at this point, I still don't hate him. I know there are so many of you guys in the comment section who absolutely hate him. And there's some others of you who are like, I don't get where all this Chang hate's coming from. And I know a lot of you said there's stuff that took place in the actual novel itself that didn't get, you know, put into the series. So maybe when I go through the novel, I might find some things, some additional things where I'm like, oh, Chang, oh, oh. But like right now, I still don't hate him. I don't like the th some of the choices he makes. Um, there are things that he does that irritates me, sure, but I can kind of understand where his character is coming from and why his character is doing the things his character is doing. Um, like I said, you could see it in his eyes when he was saying that, hey, if you do this, I can't protect you. And Wujian's like, well, then cut off all ties. 
cut off all ties, don't protect me. Um, as far as the rest of the world is concerned, I rebel. Tell them I rebelled. And tell them that I have nothing to do with your clan anymore. Basically, Wu Xian is out here trying to s save face for Chang. Like, hey, I know how important this world is for you. I know that I can't ask you to leave this world of order or whatever you guys want to call it out there. I know I can't ask you to do what I'm doing. And I know that it's just, it's not for you. That's the world you grew up in. That's the world that is for you right now. So I don't want to cause any more trouble for you in that world. So just tell them, tell them I, I bounced out. Give me, put bad, give me a bad name. Put all the blame on me. Let me be your scapegoat. And you, you go and thrive and prosper in that world you do what you got to do out there let you you just tell them tell them i i acted a fool and this that and the other but you could see in chang's eyes where it's like he didn't want to do that yes he still did it and it's not great not happy about it but he didn't want to do it like he he still cared about his brother and his brother cared about him and they're just doing what is best for them at this moment. They reached an impasse. Wu Xiang was not going back to that world. He was not going to be part of that world. It just wasn't going to happen. Lan Zhan tried. Ching tried. Chang ch tried. It wasn't going to happen. Like the three heavy hitters right now tried, and Wu Xiang's not going back to that world. It's just not happening. Um, and Wu Xiang doesn't care. He's like, they want to trash me? Fine. They want to trash my reputation? That's great. I couldn't care less. I'm not trying to do anything with them. M miss me with that shit. I don't see them. Um, but everyone else around him is like, please let us save you. Let us let us keep you safe. Please come back. We just want we want you in our lives. We want to still be together. And we want please just. And it's like it's just not it's it's not meant to be. So. <laughs> Chang is doing what he's got to do. Wu Xiang's doing what he's got to do. And that's that. Um, they had their little duel. Not to the death. They were just battling. Um, and, you know, they, like I said, they're, they're kind of on the same page now where it's like they know where each other stands. Chang knows if it comes down to it, Wu Xiang will fight back. Wu Xiang knows if it comes down to it, Chang will kill him. Um, I don't want that to be the case, but of course flashback to the beginning of episode one when Wu Shan's hanging off a mountain and Chang was so happy to thrust that well maybe not happy but he thrusted that sword and then th flung his ass off the mountain Chang will not hesitate to kill him yes um, so I don't know if that big cape throwing yelling screaming thing he did when he came back down the mountain was for show just to like let his followers like believe like you know he is the enemy this because that's a narrative we're selling now we're we're not bringing wuxian back with us wuxian said to do this so to save face blah blah, blah wuxian is now the enemy so i don't know if he was truly upset in that moment or he's like oh he's he's this that and this, or if that was just him selling it you know like okay let me make sure that these people buy what i'm saying um but yeah, that whole fight scene was gorgeous. Oh, God. Ugh, love, 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 love. Eternal wind in the hair. Uh, then we had Yan Li dreaming about Wu Xian and him just on the boat and just sailing past. And she, mentally, I think she knows. She knows what's going on. Um, she's very attuned to her brothers and her family. Like, even when her parents passed, I think she, like, she'd, like, dropped a talisman or something like that. And, like, she knew. She knew what was happening. Um, so, it makes me sad that she will potentially not get to see Wu Xian again. Um, and get to have, like, some sort of goodbye. And we know that she, she's still at the Golden Unicorn Tower, I think, what it's called. She's still at, um... The Jang clan's place, and or the Jin Jin clan. I'm sorry. So the Jin clan's place, and I, she said his name at some point. I keep calling him Peacock because I can't remember his name. I, I didn't like him in the earlier parts of the series, so I just chose not to commit his name to memory. Um, I'm just kind of scrubbing through the episode to see if I can find where she says his name, so I can stop calling him Peacock. Otherwise, I'm just going to keep calling him Peacock. Mm, nope, that was it. Mm, 
Come on, say it. Say it. Zishuan. There we go. So, Zishuan obviously wants her to stay because he loves her. And like I said it, during that scene, if it wasn't for stuff that he did earlier parts of the series, I would just see him as just an adorably in love character who doesn't know how to use his words and is just kind of bad at love like he loves he's he he's got such a big crush on her he he likes her so much but he just doesn't know how to say words doesn't really know how to act he kind of bumbles and it's like it it's it can be adorably charming so like him in that scene with her was adorable and i'm like i love you Four episodes ago, I hated you, but I love you right now. You're adorable. Um, and he, he genuinely wants, he genuinely likes her and genuinely wants to build a happy home for her. Wants to build something for her. And she's like, I want to go back to the Lotus Pier. He's like, I know this isn't the Lotus Pier, but I'll build, I'll gladly build another Lotus Pier here for you. And they just kind of sat there and basked in this lovey-dovey energy. And it's adorable. Um, so... I don't, if I remember correctly, because it's been, God knows, months at this point since we were pre-time jump, um, or pre-flashback, she's dead in present day, because I want to say she had, Jin had a nephew who we were, who was an asshole, or not Jin, Chang, Chang had a nephew who was an asshole. And Wu Zhang was using whatever magic, blah, blah, blah. And then that's why Chang started using his purple lightning on the body that Wu Zhang was inhabiting. Um, because it's like, these magics are are his. And we, we, we can't have those magics around here. But his little asshole nephew was, um, well, deserving. But I want to say that at that point, they mentioned that the mother was not with them anymore. So seeing as this is his only other sibling to produce, uh, to be able to produce some sort of nephew since Wu Xian is out of the picture. That means that she is not with us in present day, which makes me sad, but also that I'm assuming that, because I want to say he was part of the Jin clan. I want to say he was wearing the Jin clan robes. Um, so I'm assuming she did end up with him. I don't know if, she, well, I'm, they probably ended up staying here, so that means that Chang is out at the Lotus Pier, she's here, and Wu Xian is out there, so we are not in a cohesive family unit anymore. We're not. So that might have. The fact that she knows that Wu Xian is not coming back might have been a reason why she ended up staying. Well, of course, in her love for Zishuan. Um, but this is me just spouting ideas. And then we have the one month time jump where. Now we're in the bar, and this old man is out here just spewing all this hateful negativity, this, that, and the other. And like I've said before, that is how, that is, that's the world. That is how rumors get started. That is how rumors take on life of their own. It just takes that one little spark, and then you spread it to this person and this person, and then you get enough people with big enough mouths who just want to talk without facts. They will, hell, that's a social media landscape people will see just one little sentence or one little tweet or whatever posted and like, ah, that is the absolute truth and I'm just going to share it with the world. No research, no, hey, I wonder what the context is behind this. They will just take everything out of context and just roll with it as though it is a God's honest truth and they will just sit there and start to try to tear down someone's reputation based off of this one thing that they may or may not have said and may or may not have been taken out of context, this, that, and the other. That's that's the social media landscape. So that's that's very much what's happening right now. We're fanning this fire, and I'm sure the elders of all the clans have no problem out here eviscerating Wu Xian's character. Um, so you know we're fanning this fire. Meanwhile, Lan Zhan was just enjoying his tea over here, and this, and he was not having it. So he stormed off angrily, like, "Who is this guy?" So I'm guessing the people in this village don't know who these like higher up people in the clans are so like they may know of the clans and they may know the clan colors or something like that but they don't know the faces which is why i feel like Wu Xian is kind of safe just out here shopping because i was worried for a minute there when he was just out there looking at potatoes this and there i'm like baby you're out in the public what if what if a guard or what if someone recognizes you and turns you in or tries to like baby you are playing a 
granted, I know you can protect yourself, but like, this is, I feel like we should be a little bit more co covert. Maybe change our robes. Maybe put on a, a a hat or something like something hide our identity. But I'm assuming these whatever village they're in right now. I, I think they're in Yiling. That's what they're talking about. Uh, the Yiling patriarchy. It's, it's working its way up. Um, but yeah, they are in Yiling. I remember Wushan saying that later. Um, but maybe the people in this village. Maybe it's so small that they just don't know. Because it's not like they've got the internet there so they can just look up on their phones. Oh, this is this person. This is that person. Oh, yeah, blah, blah, blah. It's very much sitting in one of those time periods where it's like, okay, they may have had that, like paintings or illustrations of them, places and whatnot. But I don't think that Fushan has become that big of... Like, they're not hunting. It doesn't appear as though they're hunting him because they know where he is. They're, he's in the barrel mounts. If they want him, they just go to the barrel mounts. But it doesn't look as though they're hunting him for any particular reason. So it's not like they would need wanted posters or anything that with illustrations of him. So it's like these people just... They don't know what he looks like. They don't know who Lan Zhan is. They might know who Lan Zhan is, but they don't know what he looks like. They don't know what this person looks like, blah, blah, blah. So that might be why um, Wu Zhan is safe out here just kind of shopping for knickknacks and whatnot but the whole last scene with um baby boy just clutching onto lanjan and crying and the whole spectacle and then wushan coming along and just showing off his daddy skills and just ugh, melt melt my heart the whole scene of it is so precious and then you see lanjan also kind of melting down a little bit where um he's like aren't you gonna buy him a toy he's like no i just said look he's like I thought you were gonna have him look because you wanted to buy. He's like, no, looking is looking, buying is buying. And Lan Zhan's like, I'm gonna buy this baby a toy. I'm like, you better buy this baby a toy. Yes, sir. And there are moments throughout there where he had almost the slightest hint of a smirk, just the slightest little hint of a hmm. And I was like, okay, I can see the happiness trying to burrow its way out of your stoic face. <laughs> it's okay, baby. It's okay to let yourself feel things. Um, but yeah, it was precious. It was adorable. I love it. And it's like nothing has changed. Like this is this there were like seven, eight episodes back when um Lan Zhan was trying to sneak into the secret library so he could help cure Wu Xian of all of this darkness that he's been tapping into, this, that, the other, where I was worried about Wu Xian because like he came back and he seemed like a different person. When he first came back from the Barrel Mounds, he just felt like there was a change in his attitude and he was speaking things that he would not normally speak. He was speaking in tones towards Lan Zhan that he would not normally speak and he felt like a different person. But like this, it just felt like same old Wu Xian, business as usual. And he's just carefree, loving life and just like, hey, let's go to lunch, let's catch up. <laughs> and it, just, it was adorable, absolutely adorable. So I'm excited to dive into the next episode um, if you'd like early access to the next episode, you can join us over on Patreon. Um, link, well, the link to this episode will be down in the description. Just search through Patreon and you'll find it. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this reaction. If you did, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share, turn on notifications to be notified when all of my shenanigans get posted. If there's anything else you'd like me to react to, be sure to leave it down in the comments. I'll get to it as soon as I possibly can. If you'd like to support the channel in other ways, you're more than welcome to join us over on Patreon. Don't have to, but you're more than welcome to if you want to. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Love ya. Mwah.